Hello wrestling fans, The Wrestling Wizard here and welcome to another video. Now today's video is a fun one. We're going to look at all the easter eggs from Uncle Howdy's return and the debut of the Wyatt Six. Also along the way we're going to discuss the evolution of the Firefly Funhouse characters and them coming to life and looking absolutely terrifying. We're going to cover Alexa Bliss and her potential involvement in all of this and we're going to look at how the faction can be booked in the future. Now first and foremost the first character which of course we saw was Abby the Witch being portrayed by Nikki Cross crawling creepily as you like and I thought this was just a very very simple easter egg. A very obvious easter egg. The lantern signifying of course Bray Wyatt spiritually Bray Wyatt can't be killed. Bray Wyatt never dies, his spirit lives on, his legacy will live on via this new faction. And Abby crawling towards that lantern, almost like she was worshipping the lantern, was a really, really touching tribute. Also, Abby the Witch is out of the funhouse, she's no longer in limbo, she's free to roam. I couldn't make out any form of red circle on the Abby costume, but we'll look into that in a bit more detail. After all, all the little details matter. And maybe, just maybe, there's a red circle somewhere placed on Nikki Cross's costume. But we'll have to wait and see. Then, of course, we moved on to the Rambling Rabbit reveal. Of course, Rambling Rabbit is grown several inches now. Of course, being portrayed by Eric Rowan. A six foot eight Eric Rowan, by the way. Rambling Rabbit is now bigger and badder and stronger than he has ever been. Of course, so many Easter eggs here. The obvious one, of course, being the tribute to the late Luke Harper, a.k.a. Brody Lee. The Blungeon Brother mask on the back. The reverse side of the Rambling Rabbit costume, of course, help placed on the mallet. Of course, again, another little Easter egg and throw back to Rambling Rabbit crying for help in the Firefly Funhouse. He always had a secret. Like, what was that secret? Did we ever get that revealed? Was this the secret he had all along that the Firefly Funhouse would eventually be released? And this is what we would see. Long-term storytelling after all. And talking of the mallet, the mallet was used, not that particular one, but a mallet was used in the Firefly Funhouse. And unfortunately, Rambling Rabbit was at the other end of that <laughs> and went splat. But nevertheless, I really loved that. And of course, obviously, a red circle on the mallet. The first red circle that we saw, of course, upon this faction reveal, signifying that they're just servants. They go where the circle takes them, maybe. Then, of course, it moved on to the Mercy the Buzzard reveal. Just chilling out, of course, being portrayed by Dexter Loomis. Just analysing the wreckage in front of him without a care in the world. And I really, really like this segment. Of course, you had the blue and red lights. I mentioned in my previous video, this could have potentially been a throwback to the Bray Wyatt segment where he claimed just to be a servant and following that circle. Maybe, just maybe... There was a parallel there, but maybe it was a link to the fact that this faction can turn up on both Raw and SmackDown. They're not exclusive to either brand, potentially. I know it's a bit of a stab in the dark, but never say never. Of course, we got the teaser at the time of the new Wyatt 6 logo, which we know what that now looks like. And of course, I didn't notice this at first, but on the back and on the jacket of Dexter Loomis, aka Mercy the Buzzard's costume, you can, of course, see another red circle. Also, this might be another stab in the dark, but the way that one of the crew members was laid out threw me back all the way to Extreme Rules 2022 and, of course, the return of Bray Wyatt when we saw the deserted Firefly Funhouse, the way that I think Huskus Pigboy was laid out on top of the TV sort of made me feel there was a lot of parallels there, potentially to that as well also. And of course, talking about Huskus the Pig Boy, of course, being portrayed by Joe Gacy. A very simple, a very obvious red circle, of course, on the pig's snout. And I thought that was sort of hiding in plain sight, really. And also another point, these characters have evolved. These Firefly Funhouse characters have come to life. They've been released from the Firefly Funhouse. That was all part of Bray's mind, by the way, which is absolute genius when you think about his vision actually coming to life and Bo Dallas and co. honouring the legacy of his creation this way. 
I couldn't help but notice that Joe Gacy was looking in pretty good shape, pretty jacked, which is pretty ironic because Huskis the pig boy was not in the best of shape. He liked a bit of chocolate along the way. And of course, the whole point of Huskis the pig boy was a representation of Husky Harris, a Bray Wyatt character way back when he wasn't in the best of shape. So maybe just maybe these evolved versions are becoming more powerful versions of themselves. And then, of course, it moved on to the Uncle Howdy reveal. And presentation wise, WWE have smashed it out the park. I love the little details with the red circle on Uncle Howdy's hat. Bray's name on the hurt glove. I mean, how touching is that? when it comes to tributes. How emotional is that? And I originally didn't actually notice that. I got so excited with the Uncle Howdy return and the Wyatt Six debut. I didn't actually notice Bray's name on the Hurt Glove. I thought it was just a general Hurt Glove. But does this also mean that Uncle Howdy is going to adopt the Mandible Claw? Of course, the Fiend's finishing manoeuvre. Also loved the dreadlocks, of course, again, another tribute to Bray. And maybe, just maybe, a throwback to a Titantron version of Uncle Howdy, which was potentially going to be the finished product, the fully evolved version of Uncle Howdy, if you like. Of course, there's also a red streak, a red dreadlock, which is awesome. You know, they have been following the words of the red, after all, the words of... Bray Wyatt potentially spiritually also the jacket that Uncle Howdy is wearing seems very similar to Wyndham's final creation in the new version of The Fiend that we never saw I'm gonna have to analyze that in a bit more detail but it certainly seems very very similar also I find it very odd that he's wearing three bouts does this potentially signify three versions of Taylor Rotunda three evolutions of Taylor Rotunda, which we'll get on to in a moment. And I like the details, or not so subtle details, of not having makeup on underneath. This time, Taylor, aka Bo Dallas, is not trying to disguise the fact that he is portraying Uncle Howdy. He is embracing it in full force. No need to cover up. We can clearly see he's underneath that mask. And to be honest with you, I think this makes Uncle Howdy look a bit more badass. Now, before this Wyatt Six reveal, we weren't sure exactly what was going on. But now it's clear to see that the plan all along was to return the Firefly Funhouse characters, to evolve the characters. And maybe, just maybe, this was Bray Wyatt's plan all along. I mean, go back to just before WrestleMania 39, Bray Wyatt asked Rambling Rabbit who opened the door. The door was open in the Firefly Funhouse. We saw the other side of that Firefly Funhouse door. And maybe heading into WrestleMania or post-WrestleMania, we were going to get the Firefly Funhouse puppets coming to life anyway. And maybe the superstars that are portraying these characters were supposed to be penciled in all along. And to honour the legacy of Bray Wyatt, they are honouring the Firefly Funhouse and evolving something which creatively was all in Wyndham's off-the-Richter-scale genius creative brain. If you think about it, the Firefly Funhouse characters and even Uncle Howdy have been through some form of three-stage evolution. You look at Rambling Rabbit, for instance. He was trapped in the Firefly Funhouse. He was calling for help. He was a weak character. He was easily scared. He was vulnerable. He was small physically. And then, of course, we saw in Extreme Rules, Rambling Rabbit in a physical form, seemingly escaping the Firefly Funhouse. But we didn't see the full evolution until last Monday in Monday Night Raw when we saw these Firefly Funhouse puppets come to life. Rambling Rabbit is not frightened anymore. He's an absolute six foot eight monster. He's evolved in the best physical form he's ever been in. Abby the Witch is no longer in limbo. Mercy the Buzzard is no longer trapped in his box. Huskus is looking more jacked than he's ever looked, looking more menacing than he's ever looked. What if, in order to fully evolve, the characters needed a host? They needed a superstar that was vulnerable, that was hurt, that potentially in the past had been portrayed, neglected. And that's how they found Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, Nikki Cross, and Dexter Loomis, characters that weren't utilized to their full potential. And now they can revel in who they truly are now they can use the Firefly Funhouse puppets as their disguise, as their cover 
to be the best versions of themselves. I mean, if you look at Uncle Howdy, there were so many versions of Uncle Howdy until we got to this final form. And now, of course, Bo Dallas is not portraying Uncle Howdy to protect his brother. Life for me, brother, use me for cover. He's now fully embracing Uncle Howdy. And now Uncle Howdy is just one complete badass. He has his faction, he has his new family, and he's going to go on and wreak havoc within WWE. If you think of Bray's character upon his return, he was torn. We saw him initially with the Uncle Howdy mask on, and then we saw this new character, which was all but the fiend at the Royal Rumble 2023. And now, of course, from the Bray Wyatt documentary, we know that Wyndham's final creation was the new fiend. So he would have evolved further. The fiend, that version of the fiend, would have been Bray's most powerful version, his most evolved version of that character the Fiend. And this is what we're seeing from the Firefly Funhouse puppets. If you go back and watch that Bray Wyatt promo in the lead up to WrestleMania 39, you can hear the puppets, specifically Rambling Rabbit, almost crying for help. Is this where we sort of saw them escape via Uncle Howdy terrorising them? Now, of course, a question that comes up an awful lot, is Alexa Bliss going to be part of the Wyatt Six? Because currently there are only five physical members i mean i suppose the lantern could represent on a spiritual level bray and there's your six but i think this is literally as it says the wyatt six bray wyatt's six picks and alexa bliss and bray wyatt specifically alexa bliss and the fiend were heavily connected after all bray wyatt wanted to rewrite the ending of his story to wrestlemania 37 and you can't do that without Alexa Bliss. If you go all the way back to Extreme Rules 2022, we saw Uncle Howdy in the Firefly Funhouse on the television set saying the words, who killed the world? You did, madam, we did. Madam being Alexa Bliss and ultimately Alexa Bliss found out that she was not the one in charge. She thought she could go alone, but she couldn't. She found out at the Royal Rumble 2023 that Uncle Howdy was the one in charge charge he was the higher power he was the puppet master the coil the spring the ghost in the machine uncle howdy running the joint if you like she found that out she's happy to be the servant now maybe now of course another question mark that comes up is if alexa bliss is part of this wyatt six and returns with the faction at a later date how is she going to be represented now i certainly think we're going to see a darker version of alexa bliss the darkest version we've ever seen and potentially a parallel and connection to the Lily doll. Now, of course, we saw the Firefly Funhouse puppets come to life. Yes, Lily has never been seen in the Firefly Funhouse, but could she evolve, take on the form of Lilith, the female night demon? Is Alexa Bliss all along Nightbird? And we see this Lilith, this evolved version of Lily come to life, being portrayed by Alexa Bliss. I reckon so. I don't think they're just going to forget about Lily. When you think of Dark Alexa, when you think of Playground Alexa, you think of Lily. So surely they've got to do something there. Maybe Lily comes to life. Like whatever happens, they're going to deliver and it's going to be badass. Now to conclude this video, we're briefly going to talk about how the Wyatt Six can be booked. Is it going to work? Is this faction going to deliver? And I think the short answer is yes. I don't think Triple H and WWE Creative are not going to get this right. And I actually think this faction can fit in to a Paul Levesque WWE of 2024. I don't think we're going to see supernatural elements here. But I think we're going to see really, really mysterious, dynamic and creative storytelling at its best. This faction should be presented as a dominant, feared, powerful force much like what they should have done with Retribution. Whether they're going to go down a revenge angle or an angle where they're just trying to get superstars to bring out the best versions of themselves. I mean, it seems like Chad Gable is an initial target and Chad Gable was massively over with the fans until he turned heel and turned on his family and stopped saying thank you. So the Wyatt Six are trying to rewrite a wrong there from Chad Gable. We know that Uncle Howdy hates liars, and he even put up a QR code with the words liar for Bray Wyatt. So is he going to target liars along the way? But I like the thought of him going after characters like Finn Balor. 
because Finn Balor at the moment is not the best version of himself. The darkest, most feared version of Finn Balor is Demon Finn Balor. So I like the thought of the Wyatt Six bringing out the best in WWE superstars, getting them to revel in who they are. How will they wrestle? I do not know. I can't see Dexter Loomis wrestling in the Mercy the Buzzard mask, and I can't see Eric Rowan wrestling in the Rambling Rabbit mask. But maybe there's something to this that we're overlooking, and we're just going to have to wait and see. Because so far, the debut has killed it. So far, this is compelling. And even the WWE commentators, the announcers, are making reference to the Wyatt Six. Even the GMs in Nick Aldis are putting up extra security because they do not trust the Wyatt Six and what they're going to do. I love the storytelling there, the little details. It shows the contrast between the two GMs in personality. But what we're going to see this Monday, what is going to happen, we're going to have to wait and see. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, it'd be very much appreciated if you could like the video, share the video, and even better, subscribe if you're new. Catch you in the next one.